anytime, any day. Why not right now? Stop looking up to your boss and start being your own boss. Don't work for paychecks. Work for dreams with no regrets. This is Cracking the Entrepreneur Code. If you have the passion, we'll create the blueprint. Now, your host, you know him from his seven tips to build the business you always wanted, and now you're about to hear a lot more. Jack H.M. Wong. So obviously, Absolutely. the opposite to active income is passive income, which is what a lot of people are looking for. So can you elaborate yes. a bit of your experiences of how you teach people to generate passive income? Sure. Would you like me to get into the B quadrant? Because that's yes, really that is, the lines of what we're talking about. That is what we are driving at. Yes. Awesome. Well, the left, the right side of the quadrant is the quadrant that you want to be on the side of. You want to be a BRI. B stands for business owner. I stands for investor. Hmm. Okay. So when you're on the right side of the quadrant, that means your income is not does not equal time, or time does not equal money, rather. That means that you have more passive uh, income as opposed to linear income. Hmm. Okay. So when you think of it like this, uh, E works for a system. A S is the system, mm. and those are both bad. But when you go on the right side of the quadrant, a B owns the system, and an I, which we're going to get into, an I is the kind of guy, he owns a system but in a different way. Mm. The I, being an investor, he invests in a system that works for them. That's mm -hmm. what an I is. Okay, mm. So you always going to be on the right side of the quadrant. So you ask, what's the difference between passive income and linear income? Linear income means you work one hour, you get paid one hour. Mm -hmm. Passive income means you work one hour, but you get paid multiple times for your work past working at one hour. Mm -hmm. now, okay, you say, okay, well, what do you mean by passive income? What are some examples? Sure. Real estate is the most, I guess, the most clear definition of passive income. You bought a property, you have fixed it up, you put money into it, you put renters in the property. And you continue to make the money back that you invested in the property. Mm -hmm. You make that you can make that money from here to eternity because one, you you uh, you uh, renting out the property, so you made all your money back and then some. So most people that get into real estate understand the power of passive income, which is real estate. Another example of that could be you're a songwriter. You wrote a you wrote a royalty. You get a royalty from your songwriting credit that you wrote. Uh, Somebody else covered your song. You get paid again. Mm -hmm. That's passive income. They put the song in a movie. Your your composition in a movie. You get paid uh, film rights. Some film overseas. That same film overseas wants to go market the movie overseas to make international money. So then you have to renegotiate your contract so you get international rights to the song that you wrote. Mm. So people always want to be on a passive income side rather than a linear income side because the people, the mere mortals, are people that uh, live in the linear world. And the people that are entrepreneurs and the new billionaires are the people that are on the uh, linear income type of uh, thing. And also another example that could be, uh, say, I have, a, I have a student of mine who are well-trained. He has some characters that he built for a T-shirt, and uh, Disney actually approached him about doing business with him, and they want to buy a couple of his characters or all of them. I said, no, decide where the where the uh, B and the philosophy and the I philosophy comes in. Mm. I said, don't sell your characters. Why don't you sell them a license, and you make more money selling and selling the license over time? Mm. Like when you buy software, case in point, you buy Microsoft Office, right? Yep. You hate you didn't buy the software. You bought buy the, the license, license to use the software. Correct. So you, when you sell someone a license, that means you get paid over and over, and then you can negotiate every year, every two years, and say, "Okay, I'm gonna raise the fees for the license." Yep. So that's how you make linear income. You sell the license, not the characters, because they tried to buy his characters outright. So, so this is no. So don't this, sell the characters. Uh huh. Yep. So this is essentially what Kiyosaki said about the mindset of the B and I versus the mindset of the E and S. Because for people who focuses on, for focus on income and expense, they are living in the E and the S world. Whereas for B and I, they focus on the asset and focus the attention, the energy of building asset and generate the cash flow. Not to sell the asset, but just to keep the asset, add some more asset and increase the cash flow. That is the exactly. essence of the mindset of the B and the I. 
Absolutely. And the thing about it, why do you call it cash flow? Because all those, all of those quadrants have cash flow that are different. Yeah. Had the Disney d deal went to an S, you know what he would have done? He would have sold the characters, and they'd have paid him a modest fee for that and then they would have taken those characters and made them worldwide and made more money than what they paid them mm -hmm. so he took a loss yeah see that's the difference between a b a s and a b and an i they think totally different yeah that's right and kiyosaki one time actually i remember he said give me one minute no you don't need five minutes of his time just one minute let me ask you one question then I will tell you whether you are E or S on one hand or B or I on the other hand. And the question is what I've just reiterated. Do you have your income statement? And do you have your balance sheet? Because if you have a balance sheet, then I know that you are running a business or you're an investor because you do focus on assets and liabilities. But if you don't even have a balance sheet, uh, okay, so chances are you're likely employee or the left-hand side of the quadrant. So just one question, I can wow. tell you. I can tell you who you are. It's very powerful. That is really <laughs> interesting. I like that. Wow. And, and for people who are talking about business, and Kiyosaki's definition of business is, don't tell me you are in the B quadrant unless you have company listed before. And we all are. Uh, we have a moment of silence. A lot of my people who are so-called zero entrepreneur, they have multiple businesses based on Kiyosaki's definition, all become self-employed. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, that's, told, that's, that a, is, that's that a great analogy. That is tough, man. That is tough, man. We have a lot of pseudo-entrepreneurs out here. And what I mean yeah. by pseudo-entrepreneurs, meaning they have a hobby, not a business. Yeah, okay. okay. Like, I had a guy, we were talking about something, and uh, he had to help on his nephews, and his nephews want to be a, a recording artist. And... um. He said, you sure you want to do that? And he goes, yeah. So uh, we were there talking one day, and one of the family members needed help, and uh, one of the family members was an attorney. Mm. And he saw he, you know, he offered us, because that's family, offered us attorney services for free. Mm. And then uh, he asked the artist, he says, okay, does anybody here need an artist to come perform for him? Mm -hmm. Nope, nobody said nobody. no. Says, that's the business. You have to watch what career field that you pick. Yep. He says, because you, are you helping your family by being an artist? Are you, help, are you helping your family by being an attorney? He, he, he drove that point home. And the other point of that is if, you, if, your business, if your business is not solving a problem, you really don't have a business. You have a hobby. That's what right. problem are you solving when you have a business? Mm. And how, what, what, what problem was that kid solving being a recording artist? Nothing. 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 Absolutely. Mm. A lot of times, school prepares us. You know, okay, yeah, you want to be an employee. You want to get, you want to get the degree. You made the best grades, and uh, when you get out in the marketplace, the marketplace is the truth, mm. because this is what people find out that live in the E quadrant world. Okay. Yep. What if you work for a company twenty years, and all of a sudden they decide they want to go in another direction, and they lay you off, and you're in your forties or fifties. Mm. So now you're not attractive to people to go get another job like what you were doing. So you probably want to less likely, most likely take a job that's way beneath your uh, skill set and you'll be underemployed. Had that the same employee had the mindset, okay, I'm going to work here during the week, but I'm going to work my cash flow quadrant. I'm going to have my consulting practice on a weekend where I do taxes or those type of things. Mm -hmm. Then also I'm going to build me, I'm a partner with another guy. We're going to build a, uh, uh, C Corp, where we employ uh, emergency CPAs mm -hmm. to take to get people out of trouble, and I got twenty guys working for me. That's how the B thinks. That's how the S thinks. And that's how the I thinks. They all think completely different, and the uh, I, all of them think differently. Yep, that's right. And you still, you still need like a successful business owner will still need a team of people from different expertise. So um, that's why you can't work by yourself as an S. And B, yes, the business owner also cannot work by himself, so he needs a team. He needs a team of experts. But Kiyosaki actually make a distinction that says, if you look at my rich advisors, while they are actually my advisors, each and every one of them is an entrepreneur on, in, their own, on, in their own capacity. So that is how, how, how Kiyosaki explains teamwork. It's like these people are not working for me, 
they are working with me to build businesses together. So to me, it's Absolutely. like very, very profound concept of, of me creating a company and get the employees on board and say, these employees are now my team. No, they are my employees. They are not part of my team, so to speak. Absolutely. And another thing i add to that, Jack, is yeah. when you're a B and I, you have multiple streams of income. Mm. Okay? Mm. That's the other part of the you know, passive income is to have multiple streams of income. Yep. You're not dependent on one income. Remember what we talked about the last time? We said the B and the I are dependent on one re one revenue stream. That's right. And then uh, when you get laid off, your revenue dries up, so you have no you have no uh, backup. Mm -hmm. When you're a B and an I, you you know you you invest in different projects. And when you invest in different projects, that's when you know your business owner is when you have different revenue streams come in. Yeah. So if uh, you want to invest on a project, say a new subdivision being built with houses. That's a B, actually. The B says, well, I'm going to invest in that. Let me see what my return is. Mm. Now, the other part of what people don't know, there's three types of leverage. There's other people's time, other people's money, and other people's talent. Yep, that's right. And a B and an I maximizes that theory. When you use other people's talent, those are people that work for you. When you use other people's time, that's time that you're not using your own time, you're using other people's time. Mm. And... When you use other people's, I think I said tools or resources, when you use other people's talent and resources, that becomes you don't have to use your own. Mm. So that's the really strong differences between the E and the S and the B and the I. They're, they have the ability to leverage mm. other people's time, other people's talent, and other people's money. That's right. So I would like to just uh, conclude this episode or this part of the episode by asking a D one key takeaway of someone if you if someone were to ex, were to be exposed to cash flow quadrant what would be the one biggest takeaway that you you believe he he or she will take or he or she will get uh the one key takeaway jack that i want to leave with the audience is know where you are where you know where you are in the food chain mm. i know the cash flow quadrant tends to be the food chain <laughs> sure. know where you are in the food chain are you doing linear income are you doing passive income? Yep. Are you use are you maximizing the three types of leverage: other people's time, other people's talent, other people's money? Yep. Or are you using your time, your talent, and your money? Mm. Okay. So when you think along those lines, you, that's what you want to look at: where you are in the food chain. Mm. And if you have to be honest with yourself and answer that, then that then when you're honest with yourself, then you can make changes. Right. Because an S, to me, an S. Is a is a is a B a B waiting to be born? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sometimes an E is an S waiting to be born. Right. So we want to take where you are and move it towards the right side of the quadrant. Right. That's where you want to be. Mm, I so see. So understand where you are in the food chain, and if you know where you are, then change it. That's true. So you know that when we conclude an episode, we have two last question, and D gave me. This time round, a different quote. Last quote, last episode you remember is all businesses are guilty until proven innocent. That was a fantastic one. So D awesome. gave me another one. <laughs> this time round is a quote from Jordan Buffett, who is the author of The Wolf of the Wall Street. And this quote is, pay close attention to people who don't clap when you win. Why this one? <laughs> why this quote? This time for cash flow quadrant. Oh, uh, why that one? Why this one? Oh, I give you a great example of that one. Yes. When you're winning, when you're doing prosperous, and I heard uh, I heard the rapper Ice T say this. Oh. You know you have haters, you have people that are jealous of you because you're prosperous and God has blessed you because you stayed on the right side of quadrant. Yes. Well the more the more successful you are the more people envy you and despise you. Yes. And because of that, that's the cost of being successful. So if you understand that, you don't get mad at people for despising or hating you. You feel sorry for them because they should be trying to learn what you've done and try to replicate it and make money for themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you have, you have to understand this too, uh, Jack. Mm. People that are haters, they don't hate people below them. They always hate people above them. Yes. That's the it truth. makes sense. Yes, that's the <laughs> truth. I'm actually confronted with a very big issue right now. Not me, but my teachers uh -huh. who are yes. who are treating a hater 
The hater make a very sarcastic remark on my teacher, and my teacher decided to make a to declare a public open war to put to bash this guy away. I said, "Oh my goodness, the wow. lovers, the haters thing is happening everywhere," and I kind of think my think for myself. Well, when I'm successful and I attract haters, how should I behave? If a hater is coming to bash me or or try to put me down, what is the proper response? And what should I do so that I will continue to thrive and will not have these haters in my life? So that is another very important lesson that I'm learning right now. Sure, you are. You want to? You want my input on it? What you sure, should do? If you, you have a hater? Yes, go ahead. Your sure. experience. Go I'll ahead. Tell you what I've done. Mm. Uh, I heard a guy, I heard Ray Kroc say this, the guy that uh, start, uh, started the McDonald's franchise. I heard him say this. It's kind of similar to the attitude that I have. Sure. When he, he says, when you see your competitors drowning, you can go get a water hose and put it in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Or if they have a life raft, you put a hole in it. So okay. what that means is uh, you let people hate. You don't let people get you off of your game. Yes. And you say, well... I pray for the fools. Just say, I pray for you, brother. My brother, I'm sorry you feel that way about me. Is that going to stop you from making your money? No. Because it takes energy to be a hater. You know that, right? Exactly. Yes. I'm fully aware. And it's of that. misguided energy. That's that's misguided energy that could be used to starting their own business, but it's easy for people to be envy and be a hater. Yeah. You know, there's people that, have, that are wealthy and successful, always have great attitudes. Mm. Well, they had a great attitude before they were successful because they they saw what the what what they wanted, mm. and most likely those haters are in the E quadrant. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> most likely, or they might most have likely. they may have this E quadrant mindset, who whichever the case might be. My yeah. take is they, that well, I will just continue doing my own thing, let the haters continue driving him insane, not me. And I'll leave right. him alone because at the end, I realize that if I have to bash the person, if I have to put him down, then I will just be a hater. So what is the point of me being a hater of the other hater? That drains my energy. It doesn't work Absolutely. my time. I will just do my own thing and just ignore him. It's good thing. Oh, I'll, yes. It's actually quite a good thing, though, because the hater helped me promote my name everywhere. Ask the haters. You have to, you know... And, I, and this is the other mindset you have to have when you deal with a hater. Sure. A hater should be a motivating factor to you. You should use them as motivation. Yep. And when uh, a hater's hating on you, mm. it should motivate you to get to the next level. Like you made a million dollars this year. So mm. next year, because you have a hater, you made three million next year. Mm. So that hater actually provided an impetus for you to be a better entrepreneur and make more money. Yep. Because what. People that people that make money and people that are prosperous don't have the energy to be hating on other people. <laughs> That's absolutely true. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely true, yes. <laughs> so well said, well said, D. I love that. Okay, so really I you would. <laughs> thank you. So I think we need to close this part. And once again, thank you for sharing with my audiences about your experiences on the cash flow quadrant. So listeners, I hope that you get some fruits, some carrots, some insights from D when he share with you the ESBI. And go ahead and please read one more time. If you have done it before, read one more time, maybe two times, three times on Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad. And every time when I reread the chapters, I get new learning, new lessons. And go and share with other people. Go and ask other people who have read the books like D. That's how we have this, this part and we share experiences. So that's nice talking to you, D. And thank you so much for spending. Thank you so much for having me back on, Jack. I enjoyed it. I, I, it was a ball. Yep. Great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay. So let's conclude part two of my interview with Dr. D, uh, Anthony D. Mouse. And for next time, I'm going to bring on another successful entrepreneur who will share with you his or her insights, experiences, and wisdom to help you take your business to the next level. Until we next meet, Jack here and D there. Bye-bye, everyone. To continue cracking the entrepreneur code, subscribe for more episodes and download the Amazon bestseller, Cracking the Entrepreneur Code, 7 Tips to Build the Business You Always Wanted at crackingentrepreneurcode.com. 
Learn more about author and host Jack H.M. Wong and book your 30-minute discovery session to overcome any professional challenge at jackhmwong.com slash apply.